Hi, this is Dr. Sherry Shabowski from Medical Education in Minutes. And this is another in our series of classic clinical presentations. Today, we're going to meet Susan Fatoksky. Meet Grandma Susan. She's a 68-year-old Polish female with non-insulin-dependent diabetes, hypertension, and a past medical history of heart failure, who is making Easter dinner this year. After dinner, she goes about the business of cleanup while humming a tune. And then, kaboom! Susan became abruptly unconscious and fell, hitting her head on the sink. When she woke up, she was confused. She did not remember what happened at all. She felt okay, except for the bump on her head. She wondered how she got on the floor. She is trying to put together what happened. It is not uncommon for patients to backsplain what happened. They will say things like, it must have been, or preface their explanation with, I think, because they basically just don't remember. The physical findings that you'll see after this syncopal event are none. Basically, the vital signs would be normal. She'd have great perfusion. She's thinking right. Everything is normal. In this case, she was injured on the way down, so she does have that bump on her head. But other than that, she's normal. You can see how you could miss this and not realize that this could be a serious diagnosis. This is the syncope related to ventricular tachycardia. There's no prodrome. The patients have no idea they're going to go down. Basically, their heart just starts going so fast that it can't perfuse their brain, and when it can't perfuse their brain, they go down. So they have an abrupt syncopal event. I mean, depending on what they're doing, they can have a pretty significant injury, depending where they are or what they're doing when this happens. After it's all over, it's almost like nothing happened. Because when it's over, they have woken up, the arrhythmia has stopped, they're back to normal, they're perfusing normally. Sure, they might have been injured when they fell, but they feel fine. They only have problems when they have the arrhythmia. So let's just talk for a second a little bit about arrhythmias. So this is the conductive system of the heart. It starts with the sinoatrial node, which is the origin of the electrical activity in your heart. It's automatic. The information from the SA node travels to the AV node, which is the atrial ventricular node. It then flows down the bundle of His, which splits into the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. The right and left bundle branch cause conduction into the ventricles themselves. The electrical impulse spreads like lightning and the heart contracts every single cell as one. This is called cardiac syncytium. The electrical impulse flies through the heart and all of the cells, all of the myocardial cells contract at once. In ventricular tachycardia, you have an abnormal piece of myocardium almost always. Something structural has happened at some point that leads to a weird spot along the conduction system. This abnormal myocardium will trigger a reentry rhythm that continues to trigger the ventricle over and over and over and over again. This is what causes that ventricular tachycardia. Those impulses will go in the wrong direction up to the bundle of His and up to the AV node, thereby blocking the AV node, which is still getting impulses from the SA node, but it's being overridden by the ventricular tachycardia. Before the ventricular tachycardia is triggered, all is well. Once ventricular tachycardia begins, the heart does not contract, if at all. No blood flows to the brain, and then it's lights out. They pass out. When the normal rhythm returns, the patient wakes up in a normal rhythm, 
perfusing normally and wondering what happened. Syncope due to ventricular tachycardia is definitely what we're talking about here. That is what our patient has. The trick is to recognize the story because typically by the time you see the patient, they have a normal rhythm. You can easily see how Susan might not even go to the hospital if she thinks that maybe she tripped or something or talks herself into that. Or a doctor could hear her say she fell and then miss the diagnosis completely. I mean, she has no idea what happened, so she said it must have been because she is trying to make sense of what happened. You can easily see how if you're listening to this patient's history, you might not recognize what happened. If a patient was feeling fine, passed out and woke up with no symptoms other than the possible injury, it must make your ears perk up. You must be like, oh my gosh, I know this story. I think it sounds like ventricular tachycardia. I better assess that patient for their risk of ventricular tachycardia before I even consider discharging them. So what are the risk factors for ventricular tachycardia? Well, HIBHIA is always the strongest risk factor for all disease states. HIBHIA means had it before, had it again. If the patient had a history of a heart attack before, that could account for the damage to the myocardium that triggers that reentry rhythm. Or you could have structural cardiac abnormalities. That would also cause abnormal myocardium like heart failure, which causes the, the heart to dilate, the ventricles to dilate, or valvular disease, or even congenital heart defects. So even young people could have ventricular tachycardia in certain circumstances. But usually it's older patients. They may have a family history of the disease, but that's not clearly going to be true. Or they could have some form of toxicity, excesses of alcohol, caffeine, cocaine, and other stimulants have been known to trigger ventricular tachycardia, albeit not that often. So you need to recognize the story, realize there's a possibility that this patient's syncopal event was due to ventricular tachycardia, and then ask the questions to see if they actually have any significant risk. Moderate to high suspicion of ventricular tachycardia would mean that the patient needs to be placed on a cardiac monitor. Inpatient or outpatient is going to depend on the risk of the patient and what your hospital has available. Is an event monitor readily available? Can the patient get close follow-up like the next day? What are the living circumstances? I mean, if they live alone and they're on a monitor, it's not going to help if they arrest in their home if no one's there to help them, right? What happens if the patient has persistent ventricular tachycardia and they don't wake up? Well, friends, we call that a cardiac arrest. And we best hope that there is someone there to do CPR. Someone better find her quick. CPR is not likely to fix the issue, but it does perfuse the brain and heart and supplies oxygen while you prepare for a definitive action. That definitive action could be an AED. This causes an electric surge that stops or stuns the myocardium and allows the normal SA node rhythm to resume. When a synchronized rhythm resumes, synchronized contractions return. Normal contractions lead to normal perfusion. Yep. Electricity is definitely the answer, but timing is really important. The faster the normal rhythm is reestablished, the less likely there is permanent damage. All right, thank you so much for learning with me, and we'll see you next time.